Now, do you see a common theme here? You want to maintain that gap all the way along all of your walls. You see there? Even around your door frames. Okay? See how he leaves that slight little gap there? And it's definitely when the doors when the doors are installed, they always like to lift them up off the ground. They, they make a decision, whoever's installing the doors and frames, usually is the same person who installs the, the baseboard. So if there's a gap, if they decide that they want a gap underneath the baseboard by uh, five eighths of an inch, three quarters of an inch, let's say, then they would raise their door frames up about three quarters of an inch. You see there? See, the door frames are not down tight to the floor, are they? when they install them. The idea is when you when you cut your carpet you cut it long. You, after you stretch it you cut it long and then you, and you then you slip it underneath the door frame, underneath the door uh, casing, underneath the baseboard. If you have your baseboard down tight to the floor or only up off the floor by an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch and your and let's say your door jams were installed tight to the floor or an eighth of an inch up or something. Now you can't slip your carpet underneath there. You've got to cut your carpet almost precise and then kind of tap it down in there. You're going to mark up your baseboard a little bit and all that kind of stuff. And, and incidentally, talking about marking up baseboard, when they install the carpet, they're going to have to be careful because the carpet uh, backing is really rough like sandpaper. So when it rolls up, they're gonna, they'll be careful and and when they cut it, they'll still kind of be careful as they're poking it down in there or else it's going to scratch. The back side of the carpet's going to scratch all the nicely painted baseboard. We got that on any job. Okay, so the carpet guys know that, but I'll, I'll, I'll probably be mindful and just tell him and he'll probably have a chuckle like, yeah, I know, I know, okay, whatever. So, anyways. That's, that's how it's gonna look. Now on, on most rooms, if you got a really super long uh, room, let's say a playroom or something like that, and depending how long it is, sometimes, sometimes carpet layers like to put two rows, two rows of tack strips along the end walls that they're gonna stretch because then they use a, a power stretcher and, and they stretch it and they want more grab because they're stretching it pretty hard. Sometimes if you only have one carpet tack strip, you could have a tendency of tilting that, pulling it away from the wall. I've never seen it happen, but uh, I've seen some, some carpet guys have told me uh, that's why they do it, okay? It, it gives a little bit more meat for the backside of the carpet to, to grab on there too. You don't want, you know, when you're stretching it that far, you don't want the back of the carpet to kind of uh, stretch or slightly tear because it's only on a couple nails, you know. So, uh, but this particular room, he doesn't need to do that. It's not, it's not long enough. It's not long enough for that. So he feels fine with just one row. And right up against the tile, yeah. You, you don't need anything finished. Just leave your gap like that and the carpet's going to roll down in there. It'll look good when it gets done. You know, there's different applications, different times where they, they might do something slightly different than this. If, if they're going over the top of a uh, linoleum floor or hardwood floor or, y y you know, if there's something else there. So there's different, different ways to do um, carpet transitions, I would call that. Okay. See here? You look nice. Looks like they know what they're doing. I feel pretty confident about these guys. Everything's fine. The first thing this morning when I got here, of course, of course, I had to hook up the uh, uh, the dryer, get that pushed back in there, get the Wash machine back there. That, that was my priority this morning. Get get that pushed back in there and get it out of the way. So that I was out of the way of them. And yesterday when I cleaned up, I pulled up the craft paper and I had it taped nicely along the edge. A little, little bit of 
paint got down in there from the baseboard, so I had enough time to clean that. And the transition uh, down where the where the dryer vent connection is up against the wall had a big gap around it, so I was able to caulk that nice and clean, let that dry overnight, so that I could uh, uh, put this in this morning rather than yesterday. And uh, it looks like it's always meant to be, huh? Although I've got I've got two coats of paint on the ceiling. I did flat white the first time, uh, and then I put a semi-gloss white paint over that for the second coat. The first coat wasn't covering 100% because it was over that tan beige ceiling. Okay, and then I did the walls, and I did the walls uh, semi-gloss because it's in the washer and dryer area. And got all the baseboard painted, the door casings painted, both sides. It looked nice, nice and clean, man. Almost looked like I know, knew what I was doing, huh? Look how tight these lines are. You know, that is paint where I tied in, cut in this paint to the door casings. Remember, I painted the door casings first, overlapped it, made sure I got all everything nicely painted on the sides, okay? And then some of the white paint got on to the wall. And I didn't care about that because I could only get this so close anyways with the roller. So I already had a gap like this on both sides. And so I did the door casings first. Then I, then I cut this little section in with a cut in paintbrush. Looks like it was meant to be, man, it just turned out so nice. I. I Finished this yesterday, man. That 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 took a while. Just painting all that with the little mini roller. I used a mini roller, a six-inch mini roller, and and my uh, roller cover was that three-quarter inch nap roller. But I had used that for ceilings, and uh, it ended up being like a, a three-eighths nap funky roller. And I thought, hey, that's good enough. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna throw that roller cover away yet. So I used it in here, and then I used a crummy throwaway two inch paintbrush to get all of my inside corners. I had to cut in this, 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 top and bottom of the shelves on the back side of this, back side of that. Be not looking really good. The only other thing I'm gonna do, this is eggshell. The only other thing I'm gonna do is on the tops of these, I'm gonna paint, uh, I'm gonna cut it in with the paintbrush and stuff, and I'm gonna put uh, semi-gloss on there. And what I could do, I could use just a four inch mini roller and just get it as close as I can if I wanted and just do the top and not even worry about cutting it in. But I'll cut it in too. That's just how I do things. And that, you know, I could leave this whole thing with just uh, eggshell finish on here. It's better than having flat paint on these wood shelves. But because I've got the semi-gloss, because I did the, I did this room, uh, semi-gloss, I also did a room downstairs and I've got uh, two bathrooms and I'm going to use the semi-gloss and so this little pantry Shelf area and then there's one down at the kitchen kitchen area that kind of looks exactly like this right up the hallway Next to the on the back side of where the refrigerator is I've got to do the same thing down there and I'll probably put semi-gloss on those too Just because I can I was wondering what he was doing. He just nailed that down there and he's just using it as a template to cut all of his pieces for the stairs.
but see, he's, he's gonna take some little tack strip and put it on, a, on a, both ends of each step as well. And that's a good thing, I think. Um, when I pulled up this old carpet, they only had the tack strip along the front, uh, well, along the back edge, like, like how he's already got it. They, they didn't put any on the sides. And uh, it's, it's kind of a good thing to, to go ahead and put it on the sides too. That way you can kind of stretch it and kind of, it kind of holds things in place to keep the carpet from puckering over the years. Especially, especially if you have longer, uh, a wider stair stairwell than this one. This, this one's a little narrow, but um, he's still doing it for the sake of argument because that's how he does his stairs and I like that. Good thing to do when you're doing stairs. He's got the carpet pad out in this particular room already. And the important thing on this is making sure you get your seams tight. See here? He's got a seam really good. Nice and tight there. Very nice. And he's, because it's on a wood floor, he's taking his hammer. He's got a hammer tacker here. And he just hammers it in there. Because you don't want those seams. You don't want those joints coming loose when you get ready to flop your carpet in here and start walking around and stuff. Is that stuff cut that easy with uh, just a regular sheetrock knife or do you use a Bloody Mary? Uh, you could use either. Yeah. As long as it's you sharp. Bloody Mary or Bloody Mary, either one. As long as it's a nice sharp one. And you know, is there a rhyme or reason how to install this uh, carpet pad? Well, yeah. Because if you... If he were to have installed it the other direction, then he would have had an additional seam to do and an additional cut. This way, because he ran it in the direction he did, he's only got one seam down the middle. So his pops was in here uh, going over that with him and saying, asking him, okay, which way should you run it? Check it out. And so that's why he's running it the way he is to minimize your cuts and then to try to keep your factory edges intact. He was able to start it over here. This is your factory edge so that uh, at least you got one line there 